Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you didn't watch my previous video that I just posted, I didn't make an introduction to this video because it's just a continuation of the last one, like it was all just one video. So I'm making the introduction right now. And today basically what we're going to be talking about in the video is the first three books of the Throne of Glass series. And everyone reads the Throne of Glass series in a different order. So the way that I read it was Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, and then the Assassin's Blade. And then this is kind of a video about my thoughts on it and how excited I am basically for the rest of the series. So today what we're going to really, really talk about is my starting of the Throne of Glass series. And this was a series, because I've been in this reading slump, like the thing that really, really got me started into reading. And I think that if people are a part of like the book talk community and things like that, and they're a young reader like me, a lot of people in the book talk community, the thing that really got them obsessed with reading was a Court of Thorns and Roses series. That is very much, it's the book talk, a Court of Thorns and Roses series, to smut pipeline and that's kind of what I followed but I like to kind of sprinkle in fantasy here and there between my romances and things like that like I'm a very fantasy romance reader and it all starts with Sarah J Maas right and a lot of people said that Throne of Glass was what like a really really good series so I said since because I'm in this reading slump I know I can trust Sarah J Maas because she gave me one of the be most beloved stories and characters that I really fell in love with. I'm going to start reading Throne of Glass series. It's a very big task to take on. It's a very big series, eight books, and you got to take a lot of time to dedicate to this series. I'm only three books in, so I've read Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, and The Assassin's Blade. And this is going to be kind of my review on these first three and my kind of thoughts on where it's going to lead to and what I feel excited for and things like that. And also, I do have a question and if anyone can please, if you get this far into the video, please um, help me out. Help a girl out the order in which to read it because the way that I wrote it down and how I've been seeing is... Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, The Assassin's Blade, Air Fire, Queen of Shadows, and then it was The Tower of Dawn and Empire Storms Tandem, and then Kingdom of Ash. But the thing is, is like, I don't think I can read Empire of Storms or Tower of Dawn Tandem. Like, I don't think I can do that. So please let me know which one I should read first. Should I read Tower of Dawn first or Empire Storms? I just really need help with that because a lot of people say a lot of things about the reading order. But yeah, that's that on that. And let's get into what I thought about these first three books of the series. I do want to start off by saying I do regret not reading The Assassin's Blade first just because I loved it the most and it is the prequel to Throne of Glass. Because chronologically, like on a timeline, the events of the Assassin's Blade happens before Throne of Glass and Crowd of Midnight. But pub published wise, Throne of Glass goes first. People always kind of, I don't know, debate whether to read the Assassin's Blade first or not. And I think I needed that emotional investment in the characters and in Selena that I got, that I fully invested myself in Selena in the Assassin's Blade. I think I needed that so that whatever happened in Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight could hit me harder emotionally because I don't want to spoil anything but the things that happen in Crown of Midnight, like there's a thing that happens halfway through the book that kind of just like changes the course of I feel like the rest of the series and I didn't really feel that emotional beat like I didn't really feel for Selena and so starting off this series when I read Throne of Glass okay I'm so sorry I'm like all over the place let's start there Throne of Glass it was fine 
like honestly kind of a two star read out of five. I gave it a three but like a three was kind of like I was really helping it out with the three you know what I mean because I just really didn't care about any of the characters. I felt like all of them were bland. There's Dorian. The main characters were Selena, Dorian, and Cal. I don't know if it's Cowl or Cal. I just call him Cal. What this story follows, it's like a retelling of Cinderella, but it's really not. It's really not a retelling of Cinderella. It follows this girl named Selena, and she is an assassin. She is captured. She starts off the the first book, Throne of Glass, captured in one of these like concentration camps basically in like an enslavement camp and she can win her freedom by the king of the empire of like Ardalan. Ardalan? Ardalane? Oh my god I've never said these names out loud. The king of Ardalan would free Selena if she became the king's champion. So Selena is in prison. She has this chance if she would enter this competition that the king puts on where a bunch of different people fight to win to become the king's champion. And basically who the king's champion is is basically like the king's lackey, basically following his orders, basically killing any of the king's enemies that he needs. And Selena would be doing that for four years and then she would like a freedom. I made it sound so much more complicated than it is. Um, but yeah, that's basically what the first book is. And then there's kind of a love triangle, which I was kind of like, I don't know about this fucking love triangle. I got, and I am kind of spoiled because I do know the names of like people in the future books and stuff like that. Like I'm on TikTok too much. I am spoiled that way, which kind of sucks, but I feel like I still get the story and everything. Yeah, that's kind of what the, what the first book, and there's also... There's like a whole subplot to about like there's no magic in this world anymore even though magic existed 10 years previously but then when the king took over he like took away the magic etc etc and then there's like secrets and like secret passageways and shit like that. But honestly first book kind of boring characters kind of bland love triangle did not give a rat's ass about um and you obviously know what happens at the end of the book. What do you expect her like there's eight more books. She wins the fucking competition, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Sorry if that was a spoiler for you, but, like, it's not really that big of a spoiler. So, yeah. That is the first book. I just really didn't care about it. And then you get to the second book, Crown of Midnight. Getting a little better. You could tell that, like, as these books kept going, Sarah J. Mass really evolved in her writing. Because I think Throne of Glass was, like, her first book ever. And you can really tell. And I think she wrote this when she was, like, a teenager or something. I think this was like a Wattpad book. Do not take my word for that, but I don't know. That's what I heard. And I think as time went on, you can kind of see her progressing as a writer. So yeah, with Crown of Midnight, I thought it was a lot better when it came to the plot. When it came to like the love triangle, I still did not give a fuck. Like I really did not care about Cal or Dorian. Swoonworthy, they were not swoonworthy at all, either of them. I could not give two fucks about either of them. I am so sorry. They were like, oh, he's like, attractive. And that's why I just feel like the emotional beats I was supposed to get in Crown of Midnight, I just didn't get. And I feel like the only people who can really watch this review that I'm giving right now are people who've read it, because I don't want to spoil anything, you know, if you haven't read it. But I did think that they are really slowly building into, like, what is going to be happening in the future. And I like the second book, Crown of Midnight, a lot more in the second half. Like, at that turning point. There was a lot more intrigue, a lot more mystery, and I feel like they're really building something. Which I am actually really, really excited for. Yeah, you get kind of that, like shoe that drops this like oh my gosh moment and I'm still kind of confused about it I'm gonna like have spoilers from here on out basically the spoiler I'm gonna give is that like oh Selena is actually the like lost princess is it of Terrasin she could be the key to taking down the king of Ardalan and that is kind of where they end the second book And she's whisked away to this, like, mission because Cal loves her. I don't know. It's so complicated. I, like, cannot. I, like, do not want to get into it right now. 
but yeah I did feel like the emotional beats I got them a little bit more but I just I don't know like there's just something about it like they talked about Nehemia and her death like her death happened in that, in that halfway point and it was very devastating for Selena and then she kind of has and then Selena has this like switch you know like after this happened she kind of T gets dark and turns dark and then there's this whole thing with like Archer like I think the second book did really did a lot better so I gave it like a three and a half stars out of five and you can kind of see where it's leading to and there's like a lot of clues as to where it's leading but yeah I liked it a lot better and then you get to the assassin's blade that's like the order that I read it holy shit if I had read the assassin's blade first and then I read Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight. Whatever happened in Crown of Midnight, when the shoe dropped about Nehemia's death, oh my god, I would probably be on the floor sobbing because the Assassin's Blade kept me on my fucking toes. And this is five novellas, okay? And I don't know what flipped inside Sarah J. Mass's head that the Assassin's Blade, like, she just eight with that book for some reason i loved the assassin's blade like so far in this series that is my favorite book obviously i think my my like opinions are gonna change because i still have like five more books to go but whatever she did in assassin's blade i loved it and mind you this is fresh in my head because i binge read it kind of yesterday all of the characters in the assassin's blade i felt more vividly the world building was just so much well done and I think it would have hit harder reading it would have made if I read that Assassin's Blade first it would have made Crown of Midnight hit harder because I would just be thinking in my head oh my god not again like not again my girl Selena has been through the fucking ringer she has been through hell and back and you're gonna fucking kill another one of her friends like ah! I was I was like Oh my god, like, I just was thinking about, after finishing Assassin's Blade, I was thinking about the events of Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight, and I was like, damn, that would have hit harder, because then I actually knew who Selena was, because reading the first two books, yeah, I kind of got, oh, Selena's this, like, really cool, like, I like her, she's, like, a strong female character, really strong, she's smart, conni like, conniving, etc., etc., but, like, I just didn't really feel, like, her emotional depth and who she was as a person and like why she would liked Dorian or Cal or any of these things but tell me why tell me why I gave more of a fuck about Sam and Selena's love story in the Assassin's Blade than I ever gave two shits about either Cal or Dorian period at all I just literally do not care about Dorian and Cal but Sam he had my heart. And mind you, that man, I, this is the thing that I loved about the Assassin's Blade, is that all of the characters are so in-depth, and they're all flawed. And you see how their flaws become their downfall. Because Sam, I loved him to death. But that man, he was insecure. Okay, he was giving, I don't know if anybody has seen Creation of British Asians, Astrid, you know how like her husband is cheating on her because he doesn't feel like he's a man, like man enough? That's kind of the vibes that Sam was giving me, like, okay, Sam, like, you really don't like it if she's the breadwinner, like, just let her pay for you, you know what I mean? Just let her help you out in, in like, killing, and like, doing your assassin shit. Ultimately, his pride became his downfall, and it sucks because, like, you know what it is, and also those small, small characters really stuck with me, too. Tell me why I cared more about Selena and Ansel's friendship than I did about Nehemia or Selena's friendship. I don't know why I really didn't feel that Selena and Nehemia were, like, super lovey-dovey friends, and so that's why I was, like, so shocked that Selena was, like, ah, oh, sobbing, and had, had, like, a, a flip. Because I was like, y'all were really that close. I don't know why I just didn't feel it. But Ansel and and Selena, oh, my poor girl. She was betrayed and stuff like that. And because I felt for Ansel too. Because Ansel, even though she did this bad thing, right? She was only in one of, she was only in a fifth of the book. 
you know, and I still felt for her because you saw her motivations, you saw what she was trying to do, you saw like, who she was as a person and her backstory and all this stuff, you know, and they really went into depth about that. And then, on top of that, the overarching nemesis and antagonist of the Assassin's Blade being Arobin, right? Arobin as the king of assassins, basically this gang leader. He was menacing, and I felt that. I was like, oof, I'm scared for this man, and this man, he is the epitome of Gaslight Gatekeep girl boss. I mean, I guess he's girl bossing, but, like, not in, like, a good way, but he really is Gaslight Gatekeep girl boss because he was, he was gaslighting me. Like, I was really, I thought I was going insane. I was like, oh, like, he's a bad guy, you know? Like, he's like this this and that like he's not a good guy he's probably the one who like is trying to kill this and this and that and then he would go and be oh selena like i love you like i just want to care for you i'm like oh like it's uh, selena like i didn't trust him but at the same time there were some moments where he had me second guessing myself and i was like okay okay he was menacing too i really felt scared and anxious every single time Selena or Sam would have to like confront Aerobin and stuff and towards the end of the Assassin's Blade when Sam and Selena are living on their own I was scared for their lives all the time I was like oof something's about to happen and yeah this book was just kind of very tragic and because of the writing of this book of the Assassin's Blade I'm very excited to see where the rest of the series goes, but yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on what I've thought of the first three books of the Throne of Glass series. If you want to stay on my journey, I will be posting more about it. Um, my next video is going to be about a movie that I saw, and I because I thought it was really, really good. So it's gonna, it's gonna be about everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, this was a very chaotic video. Thank you so much if you actually stayed and heard my, like, very chaotic thought process. But, yeah, I really am excited now to see where this book, this book series goes because it's kind of increasingly getting better. And, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.